What's up everybody, I'm Joe Prime here and welcome to the first build along video. If you've been keeping track with the playthrough, it's going to take place between episodes 2 and 3. It's time for us to build our first starter house. So I've gone ahead and collected about 200 pieces of wood here. The majority of this house is going to be made out of wood, as we've not unlocked iron, and therefore not unlocked the ability to build with stone. So wood is going to be our main go-to for this guy. I've got a bit of land flattened out here already. I do have an idea of how I'd like this to play out. So the main concept is we'll have this path go up to the front door, and it'll be an L-shaped building. So we'll have the short end of the L over here, and the long end of the L going this way. The short end will end up being more of our blacksmith's forging smelting area, and then we'll have our living quarters in the long part of the L over here with all of our comfort and our fireplace. And then in this little alcove, kind of be in the middle, I think we'll set up a quick little farming area just to get our carrots and things set up. With all that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Now, even though I do have an idea of how I want this to look when we're done with it, I don't have anything specific planned out, so we're just going to kind of freestyle it as we go along here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of video of breaking out the building into their own segments. If you do like it, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is collect some of our wood here. And I'm just going to lay out a quick foundation down at the bottom to give us a bit of an outline of what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and get some wood beams be where we want to start. Thinking we'll probably start about here, probably pretty far back. Let's go about there. Let's see how many we want to go out. How many have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's go ahead and make it an even 10, I guess. Go down a little bit more of our lumber yard here. Actually, let's go ahead and try to make it an odd number. So let's go out to 11, 11 or 13. Hmm. I think we could probably fit 13 in here. It might be a little bit bigger than what we need it to be. But it could make it a little bit easier to decorate down the line as well. Could have 13 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Probably went too far. Too far. Alright, 13 will work. And let's go ahead and cut it in. I'm assuming this is probably going to end up being around 7 in. Seven looks pretty good. And to bring it in this side, we'll probably go with four. Yeah, four looks about right. Let's cut this in a bit. We'll leave two open here to be the kind of the hallway section. We want to make that a little bit wider, actually. Maybe we want to make that a little bit wider. Just go three in. Bring these down. I'm thinking this might be too long now, now that I'm seeing it. Go ahead and cut this down. Two. Six, seven. Yeah, that's probably fine, actually. Brings us down to 11, which is kind of where I was initially thinking we were going to start. <laughs> Funny how that always works out. Yeah. Oops. Alright, right down to there. That looks like a pretty good layout to start with. We'll have the entrance here. This little area, probably turn it into a little bit of a patio with the bees out here. We'll have the fireplace we'll cut out over here. And on this side, we'll have the smelters on the outside. 
access ports built into the wall. We'll put our workbench in the forge over here. Probably a lot of storage over here. I think that'll work. We'll have our bed over here. Plenty of room to put resting bonus items around it. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get the floor put in now. Foundation laid out, looking pretty good. First thing I want to do is kind of work on the fireplace area. So what I think might look good, you cut in these corners, make them a little more interesting. Take these out. Let's see, maybe if we go with a single floor tile here. We want to go with some gold or wood you know what we could probably do is if we go with some angled one by one beams this that might work out pretty well snap some wood floors in there to fill in the gap like that. A little bit of overhang with that one, but I think it'll be alright. Same thing over here. Alright, nice. That gives a little more of a rounded bit to where we're going to put the fireplace. Put this out. I think we're actually going to end up putting the fireplace just kind of right here. Let's grab maybe some core wood for this. There, there. Another one there and there. Then in the back, actually save some resources, I think. And just go back to regular wood beams. Did we want to do this? It's actually kind of interesting. Leave that the way it is there on the sides. I think we'll do one meter of beams this way. Put some walls. Put some walls there. All over here. Put a full size wall on the back. Fill in these little side gaps here. something like that then we'll see how the roof comes in or how we want to end up making the chimney I think for now that'll give us a pretty nice little fireplace to work with and then let's go ahead and cut out the entrance now actually we might not even need to cut anything out let's see we want to go with the regular door we want to go with the tall door Is the tall door too high, or is it a little less? It is a little less. Awesome. Actually, let's go with the tall door. Fine. Because what I really want to do is make this about one and a half high all the way around. So for the walls, we're going to do something like this. This can actually just stay a hard corner. I think that'll work well for showing the entrance. Do that and then fill it in here just to make it a little teeny weeny bit higher so we're not so close to the ceiling that it cameras being affected and feels kind of claustrophobic give it just a little bit more headroom 
Might actually need more wood. I thought a couple hundred was going to be alright. Apparently not. We'll end up doing something like that. We'll end up knocking some of these out, turning them into windows down the line as well. What are you doing out there? Bad in here. It won't be so dark. So we don't have things like sconces or anything to work with right now. That's just fine like that. Let's go ahead and see how difficult it's going to be to fill in this one. It should snap together pretty smoothly. We are just going to have to build it up small pieces all the way though. Maintain that curvature. That's fine. The same thing on the other side for now. Alright, awesome. That'll look good. That little gap on the top I don't think is going to be fully enough for the chimney. I think it'll give us something to work with. We'll come back to it. Come back to it. Alright, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of these walls for now. Alright, now that we've got the wall set up, we got the basic structure going, got the entrance, got the sun in our eyes. It's starting to come together here. I'm gonna have to start working on the roof. Might be a little more complicated around this fireplace than I initially expected it to be. So we're actually gonna have to change this up a little bit to make it make it work with the roof in the way that I want it to look. We're gonna tear all this out. All our wood back here. And what we're gonna do instead, I'm gonna use one meter walls on the inside here. Put those around. So they go there. We're gonna put a one meter pole. Make sure it's snapping bottom here. Like that. Then we're going to use some 26 degree roofs on the inside instead of 45s. So they're snapping top like that. That still gives us the same aesthetic. We got a nice big opening smoke to go out the back. And then for the roof bits, we can put in a 45 here. Snap on a corner piece, snap into the top center, rotate it around, wind up, put on more 45s, snap into the top here and here, other corner, there, and more 45s here. And that brings us back to a nice square. For the roof, and it actually looks kind of cool from the outside because we get a little bit of an overhang. There's a bit of a gap that we might fill in depending on how you look at it. But for most angles, it's pretty clean. This should be plenty of space for the smoke to escape from the fireplace. There's still a few, a few things we might do to pretty it up even a little bit more. But for now, that'll give us a good design. Now that we've got the roof figured out for the angled section. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the roof real quick. And to cap it all off, I think I'm going to try to use 26 degrees so we don't end up with too much of a point on the top. Here we'll probably just end up using corners, fill in then we'll do 26s all the way down the rest of it.
And there we go. Now we have the roof filled in. I might go in and add some more beams just to kind of spruce it up a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good to start. Go ahead and take a look at how it's working from the outside. It's pretty good. Been pretty smooth all the way around. I know some people are a fan of putting in more of an overhang for the outside. Something like this all the way around. I might do that in some areas depending on how it goes, but for now, I'm gonna leave it a little more flat edged. Let's see what we want to do when we get into the decoration stages. I'm thinking we should be able to fit probably three in here. The one there. That and then some nice light may not be working out so well actually. Hmm. Wonder if we do need to replace these with 45s. Let's see if we just take these out and put in some 45s. Oh, that's very low. I want them that low. Hmm. Hmm. And so what we might. What is change these to twenty six Come on. Change those to twenty sixes and put some forty fives in here. That lets the smoke clear out. About one of these for now to let that excess go. Alright, I don't see any more building up, so I think that works. Let's see if it looks terrible from the outside or not. No, well, it doesn't look great. It is functional. I think we could probably get away with filling in this bit here, potentially, help make it look a lot better. It still works. That seems to still work. A little bit of gap here that we might be able to get away with filling in. Maybe with the theme. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that fills in most of it unless you're really looking for the gap, but general use it keeps it filled in pretty well. It looks alright from the outside. Almost kind of makes it look like this whole thing could transform and close down, which is kind of neat. Alright. I'm not upset about that at all. Not upset about that at all. Let's stick with that. Need a 25, 26 outside. Fill that back in. There we go. Alright. Now that's working. And it looks pretty good. I think we might actually... Hmm. Getting into decorating stages before we're even close to done here, but that's alright. See, these are 45, so can we get one of these on the side here? Something like that. Something like that. It's not sticking out too much here. Oh, that actually helps bring it all together, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not upset with that at all. Okay, so anyway, back to functionality-wise. I want to put some cooking stations in here. Like we can get them at a bit of, bit of an angle this way. That might block 
see. Put one in there. Take this around in the same way. Up to the front here. Put one in there. And then we should have enough room for the cauldron in the middle, as long as it's not too tall. We'll find out when we get to that point. For now we can go ahead and throw it. Throw our food in there. That'll cook up nicely and should be pretty easy to grab it. Also thinking I might move the bed. I think I will. I think what we'll end up doing with that. Maybe put it more this kind of angle. Turn the corner here a little bit more. I like that. Oh yeah, that spits it right out. Perfect. Yeah, because what else I think I might do here is eventually put in a nice sitting log. Then probably a deer rug. Something like that. We'll get to that when we get to decorating though. Right now we're getting we're getting way ahead of ourselves. So Figure out, I kind of like this area for a window, so I might just leave that one as a window. And then this is going to be our crafting area. So I think what I'll do is actually knock out these two. Fill them back in with half walls. You rotate them around. Something like that. There and there. We'll do kind of the classic center beam style. There in the middle. Nice little window. Go ahead and do the same thing over here. Alright, now we're back with some extra wood. Got this window finished up nicely. We're going to want to put another window in the back so we can see what's going on out here as well, but I'm not entirely sure where that's going to go yet. So for now, let's go ahead and start working on the crafting and forge area instead. Go ahead and get our workbench set up. I'm going to put that over in this corner right here. That nice and lined up with the window right there. That'll work. Then let's see if we have... I don't have the forge unlocked yet because we haven't actually smelted anything. That's fine. We are going to want to put the chopping block down. Let's head over to our other base here and collect this one. This one over here. I think this thing looks pretty aesthetic. This might be something that actually ends up going outside here. But we're also most likely going to put the tanning rack right here. Just go ahead and stick it inside for now. We can put it right under the window here. It's pretty cool. The forge is a little bit smaller than the workbench, so it'll fit nicely. We might even kind of do it at an angle over here in this corner. And then these walls are going to be where we're going to put the smelters. We're going to have two of them. I'm thinking... Most likely it's going to end up being this wall and this wall. We'll want to have access to them for. In fact, let's see how it looks if we put them around this way. Now let's try doing the same thing with this one here. Get it in as close as possible. Make sure it's centered. There we go. Now they're both looking cool. Very cool. Then what we're going to do in the middle here, put in some shelving, little half floors, one there, just kind of eyeball it, try to put another one kind of as close to center as possible here, Let's see how that looks, that should work out pretty well, drop some chests, Storage. That would be more efficient, of course. Rotate them out. Put three of them per shelf. But 
the design, and because we don't need that much storage space to begin with, we'll go ahead and put them oriented the way that they were designed to be. There. And one more. A little wonky, but actually, I don't, I don't mind it. It's a little more, a little more flavor. Then we can go ahead and drop this off in there. And once we get all of our ore and everything, we'll drop it in there. This will be like general crafting storage, and then probably ore, and then completed uh, smelted items up at the top, something like that. So that will work for now, as far as the smelting area goes. We'll get the forge put in over here once that's ready to go. This corner needs something. Maybe maybe a trophy or something will fill in the gap over there. That'll come with decorating. But for now, what else do we need functionality-wise? I think that's pretty much it, actually. Got our bed, got our fire, got our cooking, our smelting and crafting area set up. Got some basic storage. We're gonna need some more general storage. Where we put that? Maybe we put the general storage over here in the corner, actually. We do these at kind of an angle. Let's see. Put one of these... here. And we could get... Probably one more would be enough for general storage for now. I don't know. I'm not super happy with it, but I think we'll... We'll leave that for now and see how it goes down the line. Feeling like we're kind of hit as far as we can go on the inside for now. So we get uh, bronze unlocked and we can make some more decorations and whatnot. More furniture. So the last thing I do want to put in before I forget about it. A little bit of kitchen storage. Let's go ahead and drop another chest over here by the fire. Right there, that'll work. Dump off all of our food and ingredients. Alright, so let's go ahead and work on the outside. Speaking of the bees, I'm gonna wanna turn this into a little patio area. Probably. Hmm. Let's see, how do I wanna do this actually? I wanna keep the main entrance, the main path here. So I actually wanna turn this area over here into the patio. Go ahead and. Etch that out real quick. Let's see. Don't want it to be right up against the wall. Just a little bit of space here. We want to keep this one odd. Let's go B. Come out here. It's gonna be another three. Looking like it's gonna be another three. Let's snap this onto the edge here. There. Obviously, we don't want anything floating. Go ahead and raise the ground a little bit right here. May have been overzealous. We probably could have got away with just leveling the ground. That's all right. All right, now for the patio, I want to kind of go and do the same thing we did with the fireplace area. Round it off a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and round off these corners here. Let's put these in place. Take that out, put these back in, just rotating them one step at a time. Take these out, rotate this once, there we go. That'll give us a nice rounded little area to work with. Let's just go ahead and put in a wood floor here. Take that. Back to our one meters. Fill in the corners. Maybe these were facing that way. One there. There we go. We want to put in a little bit of railing. An entrance way here. Possibly here. Might be a little easier to do it over there, so we have a flat edge to work with. But or I guess we could do it right up the, up the front here. 
tactic. We wanted to do that. We probably want to snap some stairs in. Something like that. Hmm. That doesn't quite work. I guess we can just take that out and have it snap to the floor directly. Yeah, that'll work. Alright, let's see. What do we want to do for a railing? Keep it pretty simple, pretty low. We're going to put in, let's say, beam at each of the corners. We can do maybe a log beam to go across them all. Have that snap in there. It snaps in there. Not entirely sure how this one's going to go. It'll be too long. These are going to be too short. Not sure. I don't hate that, but I'm also not sure if I love it. Let's see. Put one here. Another one there. The way it looks better. And the cross beam is kind of cool. So maybe it looks a little smoother. Not sure. I think we'll go with the cross beam for now. We have that right there. There. Yeah, it's not so bad. Alright, and then let's go ahead and get in a. Let's see. Do you want to do a 2 meter? Or 1 meter. Maybe just a 1 meter is better. Put one there, and one there. That's far enough apart to bees in. Getting these to line up in the center of the beams is not always the easiest thing in the world. They're not perfect, so it's okay. I want to get them as close as you can. These are definitely going to be too close together though, I think. They are happy. They're well alright. Gives us a little, little patio, a little bee area. It's not very expandable for when we find more bees, but we'll deal with that when we build the actual whole base. After this as well, there's a little bit of a gap here. Might have to go ahead and do the same thing we did with the patio. Place this beam and some stairs. That. So we can just walk up in here. And that gives it, gives it a nice little aesthetic actually since it covers up everything but the top floor. Kind of looks like a nice little ledge. Next thing that we can add in for now. I want to go ahead and actually cut this area down a little bit more. Alright, that'll work right there. This might actually be a little bit lower than I wanted it to be. But for now I think it'll it'll work for what I'm trying to do. And we're gonna set up a little outer fence here. This doesn't have to be perfect. In fact the more the more kind of wonky it is, the better it looks in my opinion when you're working with these fences. Set up a little something like this here. Maybe we need one more. Yeah, one more. And let's go back in and possibly we can put in some stairs here. Make this a little easier to get in and out of. So the concept is we'll end up cultivating this little area. We'll just put down some carrots. That'll be a nice little gardening area to start off with. Again, not super big, not super expandable. Since this is just a little starter house, not a big deal either. And we did mess up this corner though. Fix that real quick. Alright. Now if we had stone, I'd probably do like a gravel path. 
through here just to kind of separate it down a little bit more. Right now we don't have that, so I think it's fine the way it is. We also don't have the cultivator yet, so the other thing we could do is just put in some grass here, put in some grass here and kind of have it go around, grass this all the way back up. That would kind of highlight the path a little bit more. But for now, that'll be fine. So I think that's going to go ahead and be the end of this build along. We've got a nice little starter home set up here. Got some room for growing, got some room for smelting, got some room for crafting and foraging, a nice little patio for the bees. And as we go back inside here, we've also got our fireplaces set up for our cooking, got our bed set up for our sleeping, got some storage areas set up, and plenty of room to grow with all the expansions that we're going to need for our various crafting tables and forging, etc. And then plenty of room down here to put in some more furniture and decoration. And to see how it grows and expands in the real game, make sure to follow along with the full playthrough. Because this will be what we are using for the next little while inside the game. Once we move into probably the plains, we'll replace this with a full in-game base. But for now, I think this is going to be the place that we keep expanding out for a while. Hope that you guys enjoyed this build-along video. If you did like it, please be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. And as always, a like and a subscribe helps the channel enormously. And thank you to everyone who's been watching along so far. With something a little different, just to kind of focus on the building instead of the adventure. We'll be continuing this base, as I mentioned, during the main playthrough videos. So be sure to check those out the like and subscribe button to follow along. I will see you all in the next video.